Yo, check it out, I gotta speak the truth About the hardest working small channel in the crypto booth He's the crypto father, the one and only Putting in the hours, never getting lonely He's Welcome back to the Crypto Father channel I am the Crypto Father, today is the 4th of September Things are not looking too great in the markets Nvidia gets subpoenaed by the DOJ They lose a lot of money Telegram is being banned in countries across the world And their predictions of Bitcoin dropping to $40,000 all of that coming up but first let's have a quick look at the market crypto market cap is standing at 2.1 trillion dollars 67 billion dollars in trading volume Eth uh, bitcoin is trading at fifty eight thousand dollars right now ethereum at two thousand four hundred dollars things are looking red once again all across the border in the 24 hour bitcoin lost two percent Ethereum 3.7%, Solana 3.5%, Tancoin another 4.7%. Tancoin is right now trading at $4.96. And Cardano lost 4% as well. Litecoin is stabilized. It's looking pretty good at 65. Only lost 0.5% half a, half a on the 24 hours. Quick look at the Bitcoin charts. Bitcoin is basically just hovering along smoothly moving along the bollinger bands here it's still above it's still below the 200 ema but it is still above the support level of fifty six thousand dollars but the market is not looking great there is uh breaking news unusual whales posted on x uh nvidia has received a doj subpoena and an escalating antitrust investigation for bloomberg and as a result of that nvidia lost 263 billion after sell-off so doj steps up antitrust probe into chip maker that's the subpoena the kobeshi letter breaking the u.s department of justice has sent a subpoena to nvidia related to its antitrust investigation today the stock fell over nine percent on no headlines at all nvidia is down over 270 billion today the largest one day market cap fall it is down nearly 10 percent nvidia lost about 263 billion in value on tuesday after the artificial intelligence chip giant suffered a major sell-off as investors hit pause on the ai trade nvidia fell more than nine percent on tuesday with other chip stocks including amd and intel and broadcom also suffering major losses the sell-off came ahead of reports after the closing bell that Nvidia has been subpoenaed by the US Justice Department seeking evidence that the chip maker as well as others violated antitrust laws. The subpoenaed market and acceleration into its probe of the Nvidia AI chip, chip market dominance. The DOJ has previously launched two separate investigations into the chip maker amid antitrust concerns about the company's AI business dealings. Somebody's trying to take the markets down. I've watched the video by Traders Reality and uh, a point that he clarified that he brought into light, I guess, that he talked about is the fact that the markets are different right now. Wall Street right now has their claws, their fingers in the cryptocurrency market before Bitcoin and all other crypto assets were managed, manipulated um, by whales and by retail investors. But now Wall Street has their grabby, clammy fingers in the market. And of course, Wall Street money works differently than the rest of the money out there. They want Bitcoin for the cheap and if they want it cheap, they will most likely get it cheap. So that's one of the reasons why Bitcoin has not been moving at all. Because every time there are inflows, every time Bitcoin pumps, there are outflows from the ETFs. ETFs are not the greatest holy grail of crypto that everybody, um, you know, presumed they would be. People assume people were, were uh, hailing ETFs like they were the savior of the crypto markets, when in reality. It's just money that is being pumped in by venture capitals and Wall Street, um, which they were not able to invest into crypto before. But now, since ETFs made it legal, all the Wall Street investors, uh, the Wall Street money came in and is now finally able to control huge chunks of the cryptocurrency space of Bitcoin. Every time there is an inflow, there are inflows into the ETFs. There are, of course, outflows because people want to make um, make profits people want to take profits and so the money that goes into the etfs is then taken out and so that's why bitcoin doesn't move because the amount of money that is, goes into the etfs um, is huge and then of course the outflows are equally large 
And all of that contributes to the market being sluggish as it is. Now you've got NVIDIA coming in. Um, you've got articles from Bloomberg saying that uh, the Department of Justice sends subpoenas to NVIDIA Corporation and other companies as it seeks evidence that the chipmaker violated antitrust laws and escalation of its investigation into the dominant AI computing provider. And it's not just NVIDIA, but a bunch of other chip manufacturers. The DOJ, which has previously delivered question, uh, questionnaires to companies, is now sending legal binding requests that oblige recipients to provide it with information according to people familiar with the investigation. That takes the government probe a closer, a step closer to launching a formal complaint. Antitrust officials are concerned that NVIDIA is making it harder to switch to other suppliers and penalizes buyers that don't exclusively use it's artificial intelligence chips according to the people who ask not to be identified because the discussion uh, discussions are private this is kind of an odd allegations of course a company is going trying to make sure that people buy their products and so in order to do that just like apple and uh, android and microsoft i mean microsoft has created a monopoly over the computer uh, world and nobody bats an eye um, so I'm not sure why this is being <clears throat> why this is being attacked why Nvidia and micro chip makers are being attacked um, for something that is very clear um, in the best interest of any company right you want the companies to be uh, you want people to purchase items exclusively from that particular company it makes sense this is kind of an odd allegation and not sure how this violates antitrust i mean if nvidia was sneaking in some spyware into their chips uh that collects uh, people's information kind of like windows just did windows 11 just released a spyware flat out spyware that tracks everything that a person does and yet there is no doj action on that part so why this and it looks like did someone know the question here all of these things the sell-off occurred right before or right after the close of the markets which is kind of odd right because you would expect that to have happened prior to the close of the markets the sell-off came ahead of reports after the closing bell that nvidia has been subpoenaed so it's almost like somebody knew on top of all that we've got bitcoin falls alongside stocks following bank of japan rate hike comments so this is what happened um while back this is the drop that occurred on the comments uh of japan's rate hikes this was when bitcoin went down to forty nine thousand dollars and right now there are more comments coming from japan with possible additional possibility of more rate hikes bitcoin opens the week in the red as comments from the bank of japan and a sharp sell-off in equities markets negatively impact bitcoin price the price has dropped 6.5 percent over the last seven days and the downside continued on september 3rd as the dow dropped by 1.2 percent the smp dropped by 1.3 while the nasdaq composite index slid 1.8 over the same period some traders attribute the downside to statements from the J bank of japan uh, rekindling recessions fears regarding the health of the global economy according to bloomberg the market also fell on tuesday september 3rd as the bank of japan hinted at more interest rate hikes in a document submitted to a government panel chair chaired by outgoing prime minister fumiko kishida boj governor kazuo ueda explained the central bank's policy decision in july reiterating that the regular regulator will continue to raise interest rates if the economy and prices perform as expected the yen strengthened against the u.s dollar following the comment with the u.s dollar japanese yen pair briefly reaching 145.1 from a high of 147.2 and of course retail investors are being to blame for all of that it's interesting the demand for bitcoin among retail investors is almost dead popular crypto youtuber lark davis wrote in an august 31st post basing his claim on the average monthly change in demand for bitcoin according to a chart shared by davis bitcoin's interest among retail investors has remained low since may 2024 signaling a lack of demand for bitcoin of course people are wary when you have massive inflows of wall street money and etfs being in and out the door like uh christmas turkey 
course, retail investors are cautious because they know where that money is going to go. Every time there is a massive pump, all of a sudden, all that money is being siphoned out by Wall Street. And so retail investors are putting their money in into an asset that they were hoping would be theirs. And then now, since Wall Street is in, they keep bleeding that money back right back out of the market and into their own pocket. So, of course, retail investors are cautious. Everybody wanted to buy Bitcoin at 73, but nobody wants to buy it at 59, said Lar Lark Davis. The hype is different. When Bitcoins, when things rise, there is hype around it. Of course, everybody um, it gets in on the hype. And then at 59,000, everybody's scared. Every bull rally is usually driven by increasing demand among retail investors, often characterized by high speculation and the fear of missing out. While institutions generally execute Large Bitcoin transactions, many analysts and traders believe that major price rallies for Bitcoin price cannot begin until retail investors' interest surges. Meanwhile, Van Eck and New York, a New York-based wealth management firm, remains optimistic about Bitcoin's future. The firm has set ambitious targets for the price of Bitcoin, saying it could reach 2.9 million by 2050, which is still a long way away. So let's not jump uh, the gun over to that bull run. We're still in 2024. And we're looking towards the 2025 bull market. Um, so, yeah, with the best case scenario being set at 52 million per Bitcoin. Okay, well, but uh, yeah, this is let's let's just forget that. But there's still optimism. Most on holders in the red as price keeps falling after Telegram CEO arrest. Pancoin's price slipped below $5 on Tuesday, hitting a four-month low following the arrest of the Telegram founder. Uh, Telegram linked cryptocurrency, which powers the open network. Ton is officially separate from the messaging app. Still, Ton has roots with Telegram CEO and is, serves the backbone of Telegram's cryptocurrency features. While Toncoin's integration with Telegram yielded an initial burst of users, Durov's arrest and a recent network outage have compu uh, compounded price declines as Ton shows signs of struggling to grow beyond Telegram use cases. Why would it try to grow beyond Telegram use cases? I mean, it has a use case and people are just greedy. They want more. What, what is the speculation here that it should do more than it already is? I mean, it's doing something phenomenal right now. It's fuel fueling an entire ecosystem of a specific app. What else should it do? I mean, that's like expecting Ethereum to do something else than uh, beyond what it's doing right now and feel, uh, you know, outside of fueling its own ecosystem. And it's I think this is a bit of a weird statement to make. Durov was arrested on charges related to Telegram's lack of moderation. French authorities said he refused efforts to stop the spread of illegal activities on the platform, such as drugs and money laundering. These are just allegations that are trying to paint Telegram and the owner uh, in a bad light. Following his indictment on six charges, Durov was released on bail last week. While Tonkon's price is up 166% over the past year, a majority of holders are in the red according to into the block data. This is what happens when you get in on the hype um, while the news is being sold. Around 70% of addresses holding Ton bought the cryptocurrency above its current price, while 10% have profits on paper. At $7 when Ton was at seven dollars. Um, I guess the early investors would have been selling by then in order to recapture, regain the profits. And since Ton was experiencing a massive hype, I would imagine that there was massive buy pressure coming in, and people were uh, getting in on the hype. And so this is the reason why everyone's in the red now. But Telegram's trouble deepen in South Korea joins crackdown. The messaging platform has drawn. Uh, the ire of yet another regulatory body. According to local South Korean news agency Yonhap, on Tuesday, September 3rd, authorities launched a preliminary investigation into the platform. Mirroring the ongoing investigation in France, the probe reportedly centers on suspicious of uh, betting deep fake crimes and circulation of explicit content within the country. The head of South Korea's National Office of Investigation, Wu Jong Jong Su, highlighted the investigators had already conducted a probe into the allegations before the official announcement. South Korean authorities will also reportedly cooperate with French and other international institutions to aid the ongoing investigation into the messaging platform. I remember reading things about apparently um, some of the Korean groups 
are involved in Bitcoin trading on Telegram uh, off the grid Bitcoin trading, which is a big no-no because that is basically tax evasion here in South Korea and the government anywhere else as well in South Korea, particularly in South Korea, they would like to have a fair share of their taxes from, um, from such transactions. There are also groups that have been accused of selling drugs, which is a, uh, a rising problem in South Korea. And so South Korea stand on drugs and drug usage, uh, and, and especially drugs trafficking uh, is pretty strict. It's very strict, as a matter of fact. Also, um, some other charges about of some groups related to pornographic materials of Korean women being circulated on Telegram. So a lot of that, I think, would would be enough to prompt the Korean authorities to uh, decide to launch an investigation uh, and probing or whatever the heck they do, uh, but about just working together with the French government in order to prevent Telegram from functioning properly in South Korea. So this is why Bitcoin could drop to $40,000. There is talk of $40,000, although some posts on Reddit claim that Bitcoin will never go below $40,000 ever again. Um, Bitcoin tumbled more than 50% on Monday, briefly dropping, dipping below $50,000 amidst concerns of a US recession and growing geopolitical tensions in the Middle East. This was the first time since February that Bitcoin fell below the threshold threshold before rebounding to around 52. It's interesting that they continue talking about Middle East when really it's uh, it seems to be other factors that are non Middle Eastern related. Now, whether or not Bitcoin drops to 40K, and this is um, the, the presumption is that not the Middle Eastern woos or tensions in the Middle East, but rather what's happening in Japan. Japan announcing more rate hikes could uh push bitcoin down to 40k wall street money trying to uh get bitcoin as cheap as possible etf outflows all these things and of course traditional markets taking a tumble the nasdaq the s p 500 and all the others so things are not looking too great right now but let's keep an eye open on the market let me drop drop a comment in the comment section below let me know what you think about bitcoin dropping to forty thousand dollars i would really love to hear what you have to say on that topic and is it possible is it not possible and of course smash up the likes and i will see you in the next video tomorrow